are three signs you are with a narcissistic person. Narcissist's favorite way to manipulate, the gaslighting, twisting of your reality, the twisting of your truth, the twisting of stories that you know are one way and they're saying they're another way. I'm gonna ask you right now, if you feel like you are in a relationship or have a narcissistic person in your life, you have experienced someone being narcissistic and toxic towards you, let me know in the comments if any of this video relates, okay? If you've seen this coming towards you from a toxic person. Oh, Gaslighting being one of the more popular ways a narcissistic person will manipulate and abuse, here are some of the things it might affect or some of the ways it might look. They might trivialize your experience and your truth. They might minimize your needs. They might accuse you of things that they are doing, which is projecting, and that is a form of gaslighting. They might refuse to have time for discussion on important topics. And so they pretend they're busy, which is another form of gaslighting. Tell you that you're crazy or too sensitive or wrong or always this or always that in order to dismiss and diminish your importance in the situation and further gaslighting you. Twist your own words and throw them back at you, using them against you and to disregard you. A narcissist, when they are gaslighting you, they are highly dismissive. They might tell you how you feel about a situation and, and start projecting feelings onto you that aren't actually what you're feeling in the moment. They might twist things and make you out to be the bad one, the one who's causing the problems. As I've said on this channel over and over, a narcissist will project things onto you and by doing so, start to enrage you and get you reactive or start to get you questioning things or start to get you pleading for them to stop. Whatever it is that you do when you are engaging with the gaslighting, they're doing that to further gaslight you. They're doing that to prove that you're the one with the problem, that you're the one who's argumentative, that you're the one that can't have a normal conversation and can't be polite because you get reactive, right? So when they get you reactive, they're gaslighting. You might know something is totally true and accurate from your experience, how you saw it happen, and you might start to doubt that truth. You may start to think it's your fault or you're not seeing things the right way, or maybe they're right, you were wrong. That's a good sign that you're being gaslit. You might feel the need to agree just to stop the gaslighting. You might feel a lot of like tension and pressure in your body and just start agreeing, start walking on eggshells, start tippy toeing around topics. Your truth is almost always denied. I'm Lise Colucci and I'm a life coach here to help you understand and heal from toxic people in your life. You guys check out the information in the main description for coaching, group coaching, or peer support, okay? It's all there if you need it. And keep watching these videos to find out more about narcissism, covert narcissism, signs of narcissism. Another sign that you are with a toxic person, possibly a narcissist, is that they are devaluing you. Narcissistic people go through a cycle in their relationship. It's the love bomb and the devalue cycle. They will build you up and idealize you. So they go through an idealization and then a devaluation. This is how they relate to people. They relate to people by building them up, projecting onto them, creating a narrative that this person, you, are amazing. Anything that builds you up and love bombs you, okay? And then once they have built that narrative, you see, then they're in control and they can take it away. And the reason that they take it away is to prove their superiority over you, to keep the control of you. If you really believed that you were as amazing as the love bombing makes you feel, what control would they have? They'd have none. They would, you would be the one with power. You'd, you'd feel powerful and wonderful and, and loved and cared for, which means you'd be independent and full of self-esteem and full of self-love right? But instead, they devalue you. And through devaluing you, they create a feeling in you that your worth is dependent upon how they feel about you. So if they built you up and torn you down, it's clearly your fault that you're torn down because you must have done something, right, to create the situation that made them devalue. It's a lie, you guys. This is part of the narcissistic cycle. Have you experienced this devaluing and love bombing throughout a relationship intermittently 
where it feels like, oh, we're in a good phase. Oh, we're in a bad phase. Oh, they're nice to me now. They must be feeling great. I must be doing something right. Oh, I must have done something wrong. Now they're angry and sad and, and attacking me, right? So have you experienced that? Let me know in the comments. Look at some of the ways a narcissist will devalue you. Put downs. They will put down the thing that they built you up for not 10 minutes ago, right? So they will diminish your worth through these put downs. Start tearing down the things they used to like about you. They act displeased. They act like you are disappointing them. Through all of that, it'll start to give you the feelings of self-shame, self-hatred, self-doubt when you didn't have it before. So it's twisting your beliefs about yourself. They will dismiss you. They will stop listening. In fact, they'll, you'll be having a conversation with them. And every time you start to talk, they'll go do something else. That kind of thing where they're just completely dismissive, not listening, that you could ask them to repeat back what you said and they don't have it even remotely right because they're not actually listening. Judging of you get critical and judging of your friends, of your family, of situations that you're in, of your work, of what you do for fun. Start using emotional and verbal abuse. They will start projecting their insecurities onto you or dismissing you through blaming you for the things that they do. Act withdrawn and give you the silent treatment. Cut off all intimacy. Cut off all connection, all friendliness. They might start treating you like you're just some person and stop that intimate connection that you have with a significant other or a family member, or whoever they should be in your life. They'll start criticizing and nitpicking everything you do. Shouting and bullying might start happening. If you're texting with them or if they leave for the day and they're supposed, they don't tell you when they're coming home late, they don't tell you where they're going, they stop connecting with you, they stop communicating with you in a timely manner, all of a sudden, like it's not their normal pattern, right? It switches and it turns off. They might just all out ignore you while you're talking, things that stop asking about you, stop engaging in things that relate to you. So those are just some of the ways a narcissist devalues, okay? The third sign that you are in a toxic relationship, possibly with a narcissistic person, is that that person seems to completely lack empathy or that person only has selective empathy or you think they have empathy, but it seems like they couldn't possibly be doing the things they do if they did. So the reason I'm giving you all these ors is because a covert narcissist, an overt narcissist, a communal narcissist, the way narcissism is being displayed in an individual person based on who they are and the way they process the narcissism in themselves is going to look a little different. In each of those ways might be something you see, but the clear lack of empathy is a sure sign you're with a narcissist. So here's some signs that someone is lacking empathy. There's disinterest in others. They turn everything back to themselves. You might say, wow, I fell down today and I really hurt my knee. And they might say, oh yeah, work was really tough today. Or, oh, okay, or just ignore you, right? Like, or. Or they might change the subject and turn it into something that they're talking about themselves or talking about someone else. Basically, completely ignore the fact that you just said something has happened to you. And subtler ways of having disinterest in others is when you see someone in conversation continually turning everything back to themselves, when they're having to one up you, when they're having to one up anyone in conversation so that that person is never acknowledged and their experience is never acknowledged. An indifference to people's pain or suffering that's a clear sign of a lack of empathy. Self-focused, self-centeredness that is continual and nonstop, okay? And sometimes what can look like empathy, especially with a more covert narcissist, is you will see them relate to someone's pain or relate to an experience someone's going through. But what you realize if you pay attention is they're most often relating to something that they have experienced or something they fear or something that always is kind of self-centered, right? When you think about it, why they're actually relating to it or why they seem to have empathy. It's something that relates to them. No real compromise. When someone lacks empathy, they can't compromise. Why should they? There's no real apology. Their sorries and their apologies are kind of like, I'm sorry you feel that way. I'm sorry you see it like that, you know? They take no responsibility or accountability for hurting other people. They play the victim instead of being accountable. I mean, there's no real accountability to anything that they do. 
you'll notice when someone lacks empathy that the relationship is you're giving and they're taking, that it's all take on their side and all give on yours. Someone who lacks empathy will use another person's misfortune for their gain. And someone who lacks empathy is entitled and treats others as if they are there to serve them. Does that make sense? They see people in the world as tools or things to use to get what they need and they want in life. So if all of this is relating to someone you know in your life, you might want to keep watching some of these videos and start understanding what's going on so that you can make choices for your life on how you want to move forward and how to heal.